Hey guys, welcome back to our work on this 1947-0017 Martin. Doesn't that look good with that tape? I keep telling you guys, tape up the escutcheons. They will drop right out. And if you're working on somebody's guitar that is all original, you're not going to want that. Anyway, there is a playlist right up there on everything we've done with this guitar. It started off with the bridge coming off. And you know, when the bridges come up, they, they do this. So the top came up. And then there were a couple cracks and grain splits and things like that. Now, we've got the top nice and flat. We don't have to worry about that bridge popping up again. So it'll be time to put a bridge on it. But now we're getting, going to get into the beast of the problem. And that is this. Do you see that? That's some duct tape that somebody put over there and left it on there for a while. But... We are going to use some unorthodox methods to try and fix this that most luthiers, you know, somebody said something the other day and I heard him say it and I think it was a compliment, but they said, you know, Ken, his mind is not burdened by uh, the boundaries of what luthiers have told him to do. He is basically born the way he approaches things out of raw ignorance. <laughs> And you're going to see some of that today when it comes into, we need to match this radius up here because we're going to get a piece of wood and we are actually going to put it in there, but we've got to bend that wood. And the crazy starts there. Um, I don't care if you wouldn't do it that way. I don't care. You know, I'm going to tell you a story one time. Where is it? I'm looking for it. It's around here. There's ribbons around here. Anyway, somebody said to me, hang on. One time I was walking through the county fair and I was looking at the canning. And I said, my mother and grandmother would have a fit about what's winning these ribbons. And the people who were with me said, why? I said, because. They just would not find this stuff acceptable. And they said, well, do you know how to can? I said, yes, I do. So they said, well, why don't you enter? I said, next year I will. So I took carrots and knowing plants the way I do, I know that if you cut a carrot axially instead of radially, it retains its color much better. Now, if you are a hardcore canner, you hit the dictionary and you do the work yourself. But anyway, I ran the carrots through a food processor and by some geometric expertise that I don't have but faked, I managed to stack the carrots in the jar. And now these, these people that judges, they have headspace rules. They have all kinds of rules. And on top of that, they actually taste your stuff. And if you put some bacon in there and you put some maple syrup in there, You'll have that down, but I knew the minute I walked up and handed in my entry, when that old lady held it up like it was the Holy Grail, I knew I had one right there. And yes, indeed, I won the grand prize best to show for these carrots right here. Look at that. Do you see them? They're all stacked in there like chewing gum. The double mint twins would have freaked out over this. Yeah. So I am unorthodox, but I do produce results. So I don't care what you would do and I don't care what your grandma would do. So let's go on a wild ride with a very expensive guitar here and we're going to fix this in ways you're just going to go, how did he do that? I don't even want to know. Close your eyes. Wait. Pray for me. Let's get to the bench. Okay, guys, here we go. Um, there it is. It's in a spot right at the bend of um, the top bout right there. And we're going to start off with trying to figure out. We need to put a piece of wood in there. It has to fit that hole. Is this thing lined up? Yeah, there we go. And I started thinking, which is usually... <laughs> dangerous. Let me get one of my special rags here 
and put it up here. But I started thinking I should take a piece of this Honduran mahogany that I went to great lengths to find and I'm trying to match the grain here. So if you look at uh, this side and you look at this side, I think this piece right, where is it? I think this piece right here is very promising, but what I need to do is I need to bend this piece of wood to match this. And I think what I'll do is I will match this, this piece of wood identically to the hole. I can come in and, and cut and stand up on a bandsaw or do whatever I need to match that hole up perfectly. And then I can push the patch through the guitar and then sand it down and make it fit the sides. I think that's going to be the best approach. But the first thing I need to do is to steam this. So I'm going to take this canning jar here and I'm going to poke some holes in here and I'm going to cut this piece of wood in half and I'm going to put it inside the canning jar and I'm going to insert my, insert, insert, insert my steam needle in here and steam up this wood. And then I'm going to clamp the piece of wood to the side of something that has that radius. Now, after a great deal of investigation and a great deal of effort of about 30 seconds, you know I make coffee can guitars. And I have a stash. Ooh, ah, look at this one. If you got this one, it's worth $100, $120. But it's Golden West Coffee. And you know what? The radius of this can matches right where that patch goes identically. Yeah, that's a new word. Feel free to use it. Anyway, let me get the guitar out of the way. Let's steam this up and I'll show you what I'm going to do. And you will be completely and utterly disamazed. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is I have measured half of this piece of wood I got from... Uh, I found actually found it on eBay. I think I'll give you a link down below as to where to get it. But I have measured the middle of it, and I'm after this piece right here. The grain looks an awful lot like what's on the guitar. Now, the good thing about this piece is I need a piece about so big, I could turn it this way or this way, depending on what the grain uh what I need to do with the grain. Anyway, this will fit inside this big canning jar here. And we'll start off by cutting this with a flush cut saw. There we go. Okay, watch carefully. I'm going to take my small bit. And I'm going to drill a few holes in here like this. There's the magic triangle. Enough that my steam needle fits down in the hole fairly snugly. And there's a couple relief valves right over there. Now, while my steamer is heating up, I'm going to take this lid off. I don't want to tell you no more canning stories, but this is the part that I think is going to match. So we're going to put that in there like so. And then we're going to put the steam needle in here. We might as well just let it heat up as it does. And I'm going to go get me a well-deserved rest. Alrighty, there we go. There is steam abound. Things are getting hot and steamy over here. And you can see what's happening here. That wood is getting wet and heated up. And we're just going to leave it in there for a little bit. Okay? So, while we're waiting for steam, I've got these clamps right here. They're very heavy. 
and I am going to wrap that piece of wood around this can. We well, are thinking, well, you're going to bend that can. No, I'm not. I am going to put these blocks that I have right here because I've thought of everything. And I'm going to put this spacer in here. Yeah, I make coffee can guitars. And we're going to clamp this right here. And that is going to hold everything tight. And everyone will be well in there. Isn't that something else? It show do. Okay, guys. The last time I left you, I was teaching you about the little known and seldom revered methodology of Lutherism yeah that of the blonde cowgirl methodology of guitar repair and that involves taking a piece of Honduran mahogany like this one here that I got and kind of matching up the grain roughly and then sanding it down and then wetting it after I carefully deducted that this can right here would match the curve where of the radiusness is where the where the hole is like that so I bent it and you can see I was successful as usual now if you want to know that methodology you just send a self-addressed stamped envelope to box one P.O. Box 1, East Jesus, Kentucky. And then you just wait by your mailbox. Anyway, let's move along now. You believe anything I say? So, yeah, here's that longer piece of wood I was looking for. Anyway, look at this right here. I'm going to have to do some Olympic-style stunts here. But I put some of this orange tape on here so we could see what's going on. I'm gr gr I'm risking life and limb here, partners, but I'll put two strips of this tape here. It's low tack tape, so it has no level of tackiness. I have a very high level of tackiness, and I take this brand new thing that we call a flashlight, and I stick it in here. And I shine it up like that. Look right there. See that? And then I take a magic marker and I trace that out right there. And then I can pull this off and put it on that bent piece of wood or that rounded off piece of wood for you with short-term memory loss. The yeah, the blonde cowgirl methodology of Lutherism. This is so that's the next step. You just keep doing nothing. I'll do all the work. Don't you worry about it. Okay, there we go. That's bent nice. I like this piece right here. This is going to be a little bit thicker than what we actually need because when I put this on here and cut this out like so. When we put this inside of the guitar, this is actually going to stick out. It's going to come out, and it's going to be a little bit thicker than what we need. So we can just sand this down. So I'm going to be very careful with this and use any number of cutting tools and do this 17 more times if I have to. But I am going to cut this out now and get all these jagged edges or do whatever I need to do because this will blend in better than a rectangular patch that looks like a sore thumb. That's right. At least I think so. If you don't think so, then you comment below so I can delete the comment. All right, now this is where it gets a little shaky. I have taken the bandsaw and put this curved piece of wood on another piece of wood and came, come into the blade of the bandsaw. So the blade is here like this and come in like this, kind of like if you're cutting frets on a bandsaw. But I've gotten this really close and now it's just going along with any kind of a small uh, sanding belt or whatever you got or a, a file and getting this to fit 
in that hole and you know about the time you got a pervert it's going to break so get ready to do this 15 times it's the nature of the business okay guys let's take a look at a rough fit here you can see um there is this is like kind of like it looks like the state of montana if you're really messed up but you can see that i took a pencil took this in from the inside you see those marks right there this is matching up pretty good here there's a little bit needs to be taken off right here and then this thing will push up into place um, how I did this was I have some of these sanding um, they're actually let me see if I can find it here they're actually for doing fret work I don't know if you've ever seen one of these in one of my old cigar box guitar videos but you can actually use them to dress the end of fret so this rolls so I took and got this really close put it on the inside and then took a pencil and marked this from this way with the piece of wood on the inside there the curvature looks pretty good I think that it's thick enough that once this jumps up into place here and I get some backing strips on the back there I'm gonna curve those two which means basically I'll put pieces of wood that extend just past here that match the curvature thin strips maybe several there and then when this pushes out those will hold that there's going to be a little fill to do here but i think that this is just a tad thicker than what the guitar sides are so that'll give us some room once we get this old duct tape that somebody put off here on here to sand this down i think it will curve right into place so let me see if i can get this a little bit closer so you can see those marks are those pencil marks again i just took the plug to the belt sander or the uh the bandsaw and run it at the edge of the blade and just walk down very carefully i had another piece of wood underneath it okay guys you see that what is that well i'll tell you what it is never ever put duct tape on a guitar body the power of christ compels you know what i need to use the big one okay don't ever ever do this i forbid you big cross small cross because if you use duct tape it embeds itself into the body of the guitar and into the finish so this hole being here is bad enough but now what i have to do is i have to get this off here so i'm going to tell you how i'm going to take a little naphtha which you can't buy in california because they need to protect us from ourselves out here and think so we're gonna put a little naphtha on here like so and then i'm going to take a razor blade that i have put pieces of scotch tape on see that scotch tape acts as a buffer and i'm going to lay this i'm going to remember that everything is curved and I'm just going to scoot this in a circular motion and keep the side with the tape close so we don't dig in. But I'm just cutting. Now remember, the closer you get to where the wood is damaged, the more careful, the carefuler, the carefulness you got to be, and I don't want to be carving into the wood here, okay? And I'm just going to keep putting a little naphtha on it here and there and soaking it in like so. Loosening that up. Stuff's dropping the floor. Things run from them crosses, you know. I'm glad you're still here. But anyway...
Look at that. Now I'm going to show you something pretty cool. You better watch fast. There's always going to be a little bit of wood gone, especially Dad. You see this? Look at that. Ooh, what color is that? Where'd you get that pen? Ooh, I got it from the pen getting place. And then a little bit of naphtha over the top. Oh, look at that. Blends right in. You're welcome. Okay guys, a couple things I want to show you here before we patch this hole. Here's the here's the the plug. Again, it's cut out like a kind of a warped state of Montana. I put this muslin on the back right around the edges. Um, you've seen us use this muslin on punk in the junk pile arch top. Um, they used to use this fabric, especially on the sides of guitars. So if you ever see something that looks like whitewash inside of a guitar where it's slopped around where you're trying to find these <laughs> harmony or or k numbers yeah s62 h 1213 yeah that stuff is actually starch so they would use it to stiffen up the fabric but what i've done here is i put a piece here now i've curved some wood Sandor mahogany, all of it is uh, that will that will fit the the patch there and attach to the side of um, the body of the guitar around where this hole is. But I want to get this on here, and I want this I want glue to be down in here holding this. I don't want a bunch of glue up on top here because. Well, that's where the finish is going to go. You don't want glue where you're going to have finish. So we're going to kind of keep the glue inside here. And then we're going to set this in first. Um, we're going to put tape over the top of the repair on some low-tack tape. And then we're going to let this set up and dry. And then we're going to come in uh, after all that is set up and put these, which are going to act kind of like cleats. I don't trust the the linen material in case there's ever a load or somebody comes along and tries to push on it they can't believe it's been patched something looks weird and so we're going to use this but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this on with a brush so we have water here we got plenty of uh paper towels around and we're just going to put the and i am going to use tight bond here I'm not going to use hide glue. And we're going to get a layer of this going here like so. Always close this because it's a hassle when you don't. And notice I don't have the guitar around here while we're doing this just yet. Because I'm going to need every hand I have and more. But I'm going to take this brush here now. And I'm going to make sure there's no chunks of dirt or anything in it. And I'm going to go along here, and I am going to put glue on the muslin like so. I had already glued this muslin to the patch. Again, I'm really, really, it's okay if we get glue along the edge, but we're going to have to do some fill on this once it's in place and I have saved some sawdust while I was sanding this piece and put it in a tin 
and we will use that in case there's any fill to do here. Okay, so it doesn't have to go on right away. It can start to set up a little bit. Now let me get the guitar over here and we'll push this in. This is going to be tricky. Okay, I've got a bean bag over here and I'm going to be able to put my hole, put my hand in the hole here and I'm going to need both hands. But there's plenty of glue on here and I'm just going to go into the hole like this with this hand and get this up here. And I'm going to need both sets of fingers. And the main thing is you can see there's a little bit of cracking going on right there. So this muslin is underneath those cracks there and I'm going to make sure everything sits. Now some of this I, I will be able to hide and finish. Now I'm glad that I went around and curved all of this to match everything around that can. I'm really glad I did this. So I'm going to take a pen now or a pencil and a light and I'm going to make sure you can't see this but I can take the love pencil and go in around and make sure that, that muslin is flat everywhere because we want to remember that once this all dries and once I'm done knocking the camera around I'm going to come in tomorrow and put backing strips you see that this matches the curvature of the guitar inside here and then that will be solid then we'll worry about finishing it got a little bit to push up here okay we got the muslin taped off inside there's no glue up here we're going to be able to do a little bit of sand in there as necessary notice that this is not duct tape at all and we're going to leave the edges a little bit loose and it's not going to be on here for very long that's for sure there we go time for glue to dry okay guys welcome to glue dry 30 30 minutes after glue has dried um, we're going to peel back the tape here that we use to roughly keep everything in shape here and we put a piece of muslin underneath um, this here mainly because we want to make sure that at the end of the day or at least to start of going on to the next part of the process here we can't just push that in so it seems to be in place okay this, this is a rickety setup I've got going on here but the next thing is you remember that we took some steam and this really cool coffee can and a couple of heavy clamps and based on the size and shape of the hole that we put on this piece of cardboard and tape here that we bent a couple of pieces of Honduran mahogany the same stuff that this patch is made out of and bent it to the radius of the guitar so if I flip this over here's a piece that we're going to use here you can see it's radius if I turn this over here I can show you that this see how well that matches that radius which means it will also do the same thing on the inside now I'm going to take this to the belt sander and we know the kerfing in here where's chick flick teal pointer the kerfing in here extends down to 
very close here not so much here so what we're going to do is we're going to go just outside of the patch here width which is here and we're going to cut this out and cut this out here and that's going to give us this size patch right here be right back so we have snuck inside of the guitar to take a look at the cloth or the muslin outer edge that we glued the patch from the top into. Now let me show you how this piece of wood goes in place. Okay, now using tools like the Love Pencil and these hemostats, we're able to use some tape and get this thing in place. So there's the dry fit of it. All we've got to do is get some glue on there, push it down, and then weight it and magnet it, and everything will be okay. All right, check it out. Next to Chick Flick Teal Pointer, the Love Pencil is the star of the show, um, because I use the Love Pencil to get this in place along with its friend, the Hemostats. You see that? So once I get the camera out of the way, the Hemostats are going to come in and rescue the love pencil. Now we're going to glue that up and put magnets on it, but you can tell it's curved to the guitar. There's a look at the curving if you've never seen that. Some braces and stuff and yeah there's some fabric reinforcement strips that they used under the curving to reinforce the sides of the guitar. There you go. Internal surgery, my specialty. Okay, we have everything in order. We have our paintbrush. We have our curved piece of Honduran mahogany. And we have our tight bond. And we're just going to get this on here. Thick enough to take up any spots. They're a little bit unlevel in there, but not so much that it won't grab on. Because we got some hemostat and love pencil work to do. And we're going to let this sit for just a second to film up. And form a little bit of a, a bonding thing. And then we're going to go inside the guitar over here. And paint over the area that's going to take the patch just a little bit. We're probably going to need to slip things around. Because this stuff is... I'll tell you what, it will build patience. There we go. I'll give you a look inside once we have things in place. It's the unsung hero, the love pencil, going in for the placement. Voila. All right, guys, there's the end result. There's magnets on the outside of the body that have tape on them, so we don't mar the finish, but there's enough glue in there to compensate for any gap in the curve. And we've got both ends tied down. We're gonna leave this sit for quite a long while. And remember, the muslin is between the backing here and the plug. So if we have to do any fill from the top end, we'll catch it like a magnet or a mesh, excuse me. Hopefully it won't be the kind of mesh that everybody had abdominal problems with and we would hear about you may be entitled to compensation anyway let's not sit here and listen to me babble while i'm holding the camera let me babble while i'm not holding the camera and close this okay out. let's put the hero of the operation the love pencil back at home in the wink can all right guys talk about something that will teach you patience um but the heroes of this episode are, number one, the person I got the Honduran mahogany 
from that matched up with things pretty well. Uh, number two, the Golden West coffee can. Yup. Uh, the, oh, look at these hemostats. They're awesome. No, there's nothing on the end of it. Don't worry about that. I'm not running that kind of a place here. Now, am I? And last but not least, you would have never thought it. Who would have thunk it? That's right. The love pencil came in when everything else was struggling. Working inside these guitars, I will tell you what. Yeah, the, the arch tops working through an F hole. I will admit that the sound holes are easier to work with. Um, but yeah, this guitar, I can't just mess it up <laughs> on purpose. So that's not what I do. If I, if I mess up, that's what I say I do. And you guys have figured that out. All right, at least the ones of you that give me a like and a subscribe, the rest of you, I don't know what to tell you. But in all seriousness, guys, a um, couple things. Don't ever put duct tape on a guitar. And of course, I would tell you, watch your guitar so you don't get a hole in it. But who puts a hole in a guitar on purpose unless it's me uh, putting relic wood from Sun House or Alan Wilson or Ruben Lacey in the neck. Yeah, I do that kind of stuff on purpose. I still got punk in the arch top floating around the background. Got a bunch of repairs going on. It's almost Christmas, so I got to get uh, Punk and Don, somebody that we all know and love. I think the only person we know and love besides me is got to be under the tree for Tammy. Okay, guys, there is a playlist up here for the Martin 00-17, a 1947 Martin 0017. Uh showing you what we've done with it. We've learned some things, but I'm going to close this out now and we are going to take this back to the shop it came out of and let somebody finish it up that knows how to match the wood. And I think we've done a solid project. So thanks for hanging in there. We're off to a different project now and I will see you next time.